Hi, this is Wendell Odom, and welcome to this edition of Techie Topics. Today I'll be discussing a few concepts related to how hosts route packets, and in particular, what that means to the ARP process. So hosts typically start with an IP address, and a mask, and a default gateway setting. Now for choosing how to forward packets, the hosts take that IP address and mask and calculate the range of addresses in their local subnet. And then they have two-part logic that says if the destination is in the same subnet, then you're going to forward it direct or locally to that device. Whereas if the destination is in a different subnet, then you want to send the packet, or the host does, to its default gateway. Now what does that mean for ARP? Well, as it turns out, when say A wants to send a packet all the way over to host C, and A knows C's IP address, host A uses ARP, but A doesn't use ARP to find host C's MAC address. A needs to know R1's MAC address, so A is going to send an ARP request, and I'll abbreviate that REQ here. So there's an ARP request packet, and that request lists R1's IP address. In other words, what host A had as its default gateway setting. So he ARPs for his default gateway. Then R1 sees that request and sends an ARP reply, which lists R1, R1's MAC address. So at the end of this process, host A knows R1's MAC address and can forward the packet to R1 using an Ethernet frame. Now, if you're a little unsure about the encapsulation there, I've got another video that was posted on the uh, same Search Skills YouTube channel on the same day if you want to review that encapsulation. Continuing along this thread of thought, let's consider then what A's ARP cache should look like at the end of this process. A sent an ARP request for R1 and got an ARP reply, so you would think that A would have R1's IP and MAC address in its ARP cache. But what about R1? R1 did not send an ARP request to A and then get an ARP reply from A. However, as it turns out, R1 also learned host A's IP and MAC as a result from that original ARP request by A and ARP reply by R1. So reversing the order back here again, as it turns out, the ARP request sent by host A List A's IP, A's MAC, R1's IP, and the question of what is R1's MAC. That's supposed to be a question mark, by the way. So, all that's inside the ARP message. So, when A sends that ARP request that contains all that information, R1 can say, hmm. There's A's IP and A's MAC. Let me add that to my ARP cache. So when host A sends an ARP request and gets the ARP reply back from R1, it has two effects. One is it gives A the correct entries for its ARP cache and R1 the correct entries for its ARP cache. 